Hey guys, and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm currently over in Las Vegas, where AMD has detailed a whole bunch of stuff that will be coming out this year, covering a range of product segments. I reckon that's enough intro for this video, as there's quite a lot to get through, so let's move on to the actual announcements from this CES. You'll probably want to hear about second generation Ryzen desktop CPUs first, which AMD briefly mentioned during their event. Unfortunately, we didn't receive full details on processor SKUs, performance improvements or pricing, but we did get a launch window. April 2018. Second gen Ryzen will be built on a 12 nanometer process using the Zen Plus architecture, which includes minor optimizations to first gen Zen. AMD did say these new chips will feature higher clock speeds and new boost technologies, both Precision Boost 2 and XFR2. They also hinted at double digit performance gains, though they weren't exactly specific on any claims. As AMD promised earlier, second gen Ryzen will be fully compatible with the existing 300 series chipsets, although it will launch alongside new 400 series chipsets. All the key features of second gen Ryzen will be supported on both platforms, though the 400 series chipset will supposedly allow greater performance, lower power, and some new feature additions. Most of these improvements to the 400 series chipsets involve better memory support and greater support for overclocking, at least from what AMD has said so far. Further in the future, AMD said the Zen 2 architecture designed for 7 nanometers is now design complete and on track for release probably next year with Zen 3 also on track probably again for the year after. That's all we have on second gen Ryzen right now. So clearly AMD, you know, they'll be releasing a bit more information closer to that April 2018 launch date. The product line AMD was willing to talk about is its desktop Ryzen APUs, codenamed Pinnacle Ridge. You'll be able to buy an AM4 compatible Ryzen processor with integrated Vega graphics as soon as February 12. In fact, two models will be available at that date, the Ryzen 5 2400G and the Ryzen 3 2200G. These two APUs are pretty crazy in what they offer at a low price point. The Ryzen 5 2400G, for example, has a 4-core, 8-thread CPU clocked at 3.6 GHz with a boost up to 3.9 GHz. It also packs a Vega GPU with 11 compute units, or 704 shader cores, with a base clock of 1240 MHz. You get all of this for just $169, which is only 5 bucks more than the Ryzen 5 1400, yet you get higher CPU clocks out of the box and decent integrated graphics. The Ryzen 3 2200G is even better value. It offers four CPU cores and four threads clocked at 3.5 GHz with a boost to 3.7 GHz, plus an eight compute unit Vega GPU, all for just $99. That is cheaper than the Ryzen 3 1200, but packs a faster CPU and integrated graphics as well. It sounds pretty strange that both these APUs are cheaper than existing Ryzen CPUs while offering more performance, but that's the situation, I guess. AMD has shown some performance numbers for both APUs, and the Ryzen 5 2400G in particular is, at least in their testing, as fast as an Intel Core i5-8400 paired with an NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030. This makes the Ryzen 5 2400G at least 100 bucks cheaper for the same supposed performance, if not more, considering you know the 8400 is rare and still sold at inflated prices. And that's not to mention the Ryzen 5 2400G's lower total TDP of just 65 watts. These APUs should overclock very well too. A demo I saw showed the Ryzen 5 2400G hitting 1750 megahertz on the GPU with the standard air cooler. And when combined with fast memory, this led to a near 40% uplift in 3D Mark Firestrike performance. Of course, the Ryzen 5 2400G CPU is also overclockable, so you could potentially get even more out of this APU when used the same overclocking techniques as existing Ryzen CPUs. On top of this, AMD 
Infinity has announced a new box cooler, the Wraith Prism, which features a better fin profile for compact systems, direct copper heat pipe contact with the CPU, and I guess that thing that all of you guys are after, a ton more RGB lighting. Oh, and AMD also made Ryzen CPU price cuts official. We've seen reduced Ryzen CPU prices at places like Amazon and Newegg for a while now, but AMD has now officially reduced the price of every Ryzen model to keep them highly competitive with Intel. If these cuts haven't pushed through to retail just yet, they should be hopefully available very soon. Moving on to the mobile side of things, where AMD also made a bunch of announcements, starting with the launch of Ryzen 3 APUs for mobile systems. These APUs are a continuation of what AMD brought to the table with Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 for mobile, except with lower core slash thread counts and lower GPU compute unit counts. The Ryzen 3 2300U, the first Ryzen 3 mobile part, is a four core, four thread part clocked at 2.0 gigahertz base with a 3.4 gigahertz maximum frequency, which from a CPU perspective makes it a slightly lower clocked Ryzen 5 2500U that lacks SMT. It also features a cut down GPU moving from six compute units from eight in the Ryzen 5 model. The lower spec Ryzen 3 2200U rounds out AMD's lineup, providing a two core, four thread CPU at 2.5 gigahertz, boosting up to 3.4 gigahertz along with the three compute unit Vega GPU. When looking at sort of the raw performance metrics, I guess, this should provide similar CPU and GPU performance as Intel's seventh gen 15 watt mobile parts. The best aspect to Ryzen Mobile and AMD's latest announcements is we are starting to see AMD get these APUs in laptops people actually might consider buying. Aside from the HP, Acer and Lenovo systems we've already seen at least on paper in some cases, more devices from these OEMs along with the likes of Dell and Asus are in the pipeline. And we will be seeing these chips in a wide range of products, everything from mainstream notebooks to high-end ultra -port portables in both 13 and 15 inch form factors. I can't talk just yet about some of the laptops I've seen so far, some of which look very enticing, but it's clear AMD is getting much better OEM traction with Ryzen Mobile than their previous gen laptop parts. And even AMD themselves say this APU generation has brought the widest range of consumer ultra thins in the company's history. The Ryzen 3 APUs officially launch on January 9th, although it may take a few weeks or months for partner models to hit the market. We should, however, be seeing more Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 laptops in January. To round out AMD's set of CES announcements, we have Vega. Now, I wouldn't be getting too excited for any desktop announcements here because the only real desktop class product the company revealed was a seven nanometer Vega variant for their Radeon Instinct compute card line for you know data centers and that sort of thing. Navi still seems a while away, so perhaps we'll get more consumer Vega offerings at a later stage this year, but you know, nothing is confirmed at this stage, at least from what we heard about uh, in the past couple of days. What AMD did announce on the Vega front is Vega Mobile, a discrete GPU offering for ultra thin gaming notebooks. Again, not a whole lot of information on specifications, but we do know Vega Mobile will pack HBM2, and it will feature a 1.7 millimeter Z height, which makes the chip itself a lot slimmer than other mobile GPU offerings. You know, allowing OEMs to create slimmer, high performance portable gaming systems. The desktop Vega offering, for example, features a Z height more in the three millimeter range. No word on when Vega mobile discrete GPUs will be available, but it doesn't sound too far away. Again, this is something AMD will have to detail at a future date. And as a quick note, AMD also revealed that modern Radeon cards will support HDMI 2.1 with variable refresh technology. So I guess that's a kind of neat little addition there. So anyway, that's basically everything AMD was ready to announce at this stage. The Ryzen desktop APUs in particular sound quite interesting, particularly for those looking at building a budget system. So it'd be interesting to see what Steve thinks of them when he gets his hands on them shortly. Considering performance should be in the ballpark of an Intel system with discrete GT 1030 graphics, but you know, at a far lower overall cost, it could be a great option for those wanting to build a basic computer for some light gaming. Don't discount the overclocking support either that could bring some pretty serious performance gains here unfortunately we will have to wait a bit longer to hear more about second gen Ryzen though it's only a few months before those should hit the market and as a little tidbit to get excited about in the future Threadripper second gen is slated for the second half of the year as well so a lot of exciting stuff coming up 
That's it for now. Hopefully we'll be getting our hands on Ryzen desktop APUs and some more Ryzen mobile products shortly. We won't be doing a whole lot of other CES coverage as neither Steve or I will be at the event, but you might see some occasional videos during this show. As always, if you like our content, consider supporting us on Patreon. And when I'm back in Australia in the next couple of days, I'll catch you next time. Thank you.